So, you're a game developer. You've spent months upon months conceptualizing and refining a core vision for your game. Specific mechanics, heroes and villains, but all that stuff gets locked down fairly early on, so now what? It's in this part of the process when things like easter eggs, secrets and references get thrown in. Whether it be a coder wanting to leave their mark on a game like Sonic the Hedgehog's hidden credits, cross-referential nods to other games and franchises, or in this case, entire additional modes and features. In generations past, such things would be locked away behind cheat codes, but with the rise of the internet saw the downfall of their quote-unquote worth. Now consumers can Google the solution to any given problem or look up a specific code, rather than be forced to thumb through some magazine-attached book hoping for the best. Indeed, cheat codes are almost entirely out, and the age of meticulous exploration and experimentation is in. However, it's not just modern games that get picked apart to the nth degree. Many fans have retroactively pilfered their past collections, and the rewards are pretty incredible. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 secret video game modes everyone totally missed. Number 10. Duck Racing Shenmue 2 Like some real-world back-alley competition, Shenmue 2 has a totally hidden mode only the most determined players will find – Underground Duck Racing. The whole thing was incredibly easy to miss due to it only being offered to main man Ryo after he acquired a couple of specific medals and continued to talk to Izumi at the Tomato Convenience Store. Check out the list of requirements online if you're still in possession of a copy of Shenmue 2 because the end result is fantastically quirky. Initially, you will only be able to place bets on the ducks themselves, the mode playing out like Final Fantasy VII's Chocobo races. But if you visit the red tree behind the Manmo Temple and complete the Catching Leaves minigame, you'll get your very own trash-talking duck to compete with. Said duck is only understandable through subtitles, but I like to imagine him with Joe Pesci's voice, and entering him in the race means that you get to control, managing stamina and speed to come out on top. It's completely ridiculous, or would be, in any game other than Shenmue. Number 9. Guy Savage, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. This is how you test the waters for a potential future release. To access the sequence known as Guy Savage in MGS3, you need to actively quit out of your game when Snake is captured in Groznagrad by Volgan's men. Continuing to play doesn't allow for Snake to sleep, which if you quit and load your save back up, will boot into this strange hack and slash sequence instead of the main game. Named Guy Savage, this was apparently going to be a standalone title from Konami at some point after release, and in Snake Eater, Hideo Kojima requested his team include an original idea as an easter egg rather than Gradius, which was the other Konami classic initially planned. Ultimately, Guy Savage was cancelled and all subsequent remakes of MGS3 had this sequence removed. However, if you have the original PS2 version, go check it out. Number 8. Basketball – Grand Theft Auto San Andreas the third 3D Grand Theft Auto was practically a way of life for me. Working out down the gym to give CJ the right physique, customizing cars and clothing, grabbing fast food before stealing an Infernus and blaring Rage Against the Machine while escaping from the cops. Yep, Rockstar really went all out with the amount of minigames and mechanics tucked away in every corner of the game world. But did you know that you can also play basketball? First teased by a literal basketball next to Sweet's house at the beginning, a random save file bug meant that it despawned for a ton of players, hiding the mode altogether. Restored in the game's various re-releases, or brand new if you missed it all this time, San Andreas has a neat basketball minigame replete with a challenge mode. Available at Sweet's house, various basketball courts, and behind some shops, you can even get a private court all to yourself when you finally acquire Mad Dog's Mulholland Mansion. Number 7. The Inverted Castle – Castlevania Symphony of the Night it's a common debate amongst Castlevania fans as to whether this truly is an optional area, being that the Inverted Castle is a natural continuation of Symphony of the Night after defeating Richter, and it's the only way to get the true ending. That said, it is far from easy to get to. To access the vertically flipped castle and the entire other half of the game, first acquire the Holy Glasses, themselves requiring acquisition of multiple other items, then head to fight Richter. Wearing these glasses, you'll reveal a green orb above his head, which destroying will free Richter, revealing who was really pulling the strings all along. Then this will transport you to the game's biggest challenge, understanding and completing the inverted castle. Inside, you have to locate various body parts of Dracula himself to trigger a final showdown. And if you do all of this, you'll actually get the true positive ending, something only a select few Symphony of the Night players have ever acquired. Number 6. Flying 
Grand Theft Auto 3. Depending on how much you play GTA 3 or were immersed in all manner of playground conversations surrounding what you could or couldn't do in a pre-internet age, the fact that you could actually fly the dodo might have remained a mystery. It's highly doubtful Rockstar intended us to glitch this thing up into the air for any substantial amount of time, but head over to the airport on the south side of Shoreside Vale and locate the tiny, almost wingless plane. Once inside, you had to accelerate as normal, holding forward for a good few seconds until you heard a scraping sound, as then some sparks would appear from the front of the plane. Letting go of everything except accelerate meant that the dodo would quite unintentionally jump off the ground. Assumedly, this was meant as nothing more than a joke at the useless vehicle's potential, but replicate the process and feather the y-axis with up and down during that initial takeoff phase, and you can totally fly the dodo across all of Liberty City. Aping the physics and overall feel of what controlling the dodo was like, way back in 2001. If nothing else, for some younger viewers, chances are this is a whole new way to go explore one of the greatest games of all time. Number 5. Dev Hunter – Microsoft Excel 2000 Microsoft Excel is not a popular game, unless you're Rich Hudson and just love a good few macros. However, this is just too damn awesome to keep under wraps. To unlock this almost Spy Hunter-style minigame, you'll need to follow a specific set of instructions that we're going to show some of on screen now. Make sure you're using the standalone version of Excel, not the Office pack-in, because apparently Microsoft's higher-ups realized that the devs were leaving playable games in their otherwise mundane software. Regardless, once you're in, Dev Hunter is essentially a playable set of credits for those who worked on Excel 2000, creating a narrative where, and I quote, you are Dev Hunter, and your mission is to hunt software developers on the highways of Seattle and destroy them. Calling themselves wretched scum, because someone over at Microsoft has a sense of humor, you can shoot the drivers, ram them off the road, even leave oil spills for any behind. I mean, no, it's not Road Rash or Twisted Metal, but for a game inside a spreadsheet, this is pretty damn cool. Number 4. Boom Bam Golf – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with Breath of the Wild's awesome selection of world-manipulating powers, it is very easy to have fun ping-ponging objects and enemies all around the place. But Nintendo did actually include a proper golf game to give you a set of rules to play with. Head west to Tanagar Canyon, southwest of Mount Rome, and look underneath the large rickety wooden bridge. Here you can talk to Modal, a Goron who's designed his own golf course, complete with a golf ball made from a boulder and a small flag-centered hole to aim for. You'll need to use Magnesis to charge up and aim the ball, so experiment with different weapons and how they connect to get a handle on how to aim. Golf in Breath of the Wild is a lot harder than it looks, but considering just how much is on offer in the game overall, it's pretty cool. Number 3. Pitfall, Hero, River Raid, and Kaboom – Call of Duty Black Ops 2 it is easy to forget when they're still one of the most recognizable contemporary video game companies in the world, but Activision have one hell of a past, chock full of iconic titles. To that end, in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, developers Treyarch decided to pay tribute to a handful of their classics, including an emulated Atari 2600 packed with Pitfall, Hero, River Raid, and Kaboom. Each one is from the halcyon days of the 80s when video games were barely more than a handful of pixels, but you can sit and play through all four if you so desire. Hero in particular, is pretty badass. To unlock them, simply shoot off the heads of all the mannequins within two minutes on the Nuketown map. Then the television already in the center of the level will change to an old school Activision logo. Number two, Tekken 1, 2, 3, and Starblade, Tekken 5. Can you imagine any game developer today including entire PS1 games as unlockables via cheat code? And yes, comment section, the outlier is the original Medieval inside the new Medieval. But Namco didn't just do that in Tekken 5, instead taking full advantage of the PS2's increased Blu-ray disc space, bundling in arcade versions of Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, and Space FPS Starblade. Note I did say arcade versions, so no Tekken 4s or Tekken Ball modes when it comes to Tekken 3. Still, as a way to honor Namco's legacy, show fans just how far the series has come, and allow any newcomer to own a sizable collection of Tekken titles all in one place, they knocked it out the park. And number one, Blue Sphere, Sonic and Knuckles. In a revolutionary and never replicated move, Sega released Sonic and Knuckles as a one-off lock-on cartridge that could actually physically house other Mega Drive carts on top. 
Connecting different ones produced a variety of results, ranging from using Sonic 2 and 3 to access versions of those games' levels with Knuckles being playable, or giving you Blue Sphere, a faux 3D collection minigame featuring Sonic and Knuckles. There were two ways to unlock this. Either attach a different Mega Drive game card on top of Sonic and Knuckles and you'd get the first level of Blue Sphere, or do so with the original Sonic the Hedgehog cartridge. Then hit A, B, and C at once when the game presents the No Way message. Then you get the full game. Possibly the finest hidden mode in the history of gaming, actively rewarding players for keeping their physical copies on hand. Something that modern studios could totally learn from. And that's my breakdown of various hidden modes that everybody totally missed. Let me know your favorites down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.